Welcome to a pre-recorded edition. God damn it. Why don't you fucking mute that goddamn phone, <laughs> you sack of goddamn shit. A professional podcast. <clears throat> I was, uh, I told you guys. Hey, this. I didn't get my Amazon fucking update to my order. We want, what do you do? <laughs> you got an Amazon <laughs> update. It's R2-D2, dude. Yeah, I know. God. Oh my fucking, fucking god! Mute the <laughs> I, fucking I thing. I muted it, dude. Look, I want to literally show you right fucking now. I was telling these guys this earlier. It was fucking muted. I don't All know right. what the fuck is going I on don't with know the fucking either. thing. But you know that song, like, uh, you always feel like somebody's watching me. It's yeah. supposed to be like scary, kind of. What well, is? It's spooky. Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't think it is anymore. I think that now. What's scary to people is the idea that no one's watching. Oh, yeah. So I was like, you know, I just I, I was singing it because, like, I was looking at my fucking uh, YouTube views and shit. I'm like, man, I don't get nearly the views I used to. And then I, it just popped in my head, like, <laughs> sometimes I feel like nobody's watching me. <laughs> yeah, you should like we're shaking <laughs> obscurity, you know? <laughs> it's yeah. Like, yeah, dude. Fuck, man. You should fucking, like, Remember the do a video about that. days when fucking... Yeah, I mean, like, people used to be scared, like, what if I'm being watched? Now people are just like, watch me, what please. If nobody gives please a fuck? watch me. I'll do anything. I'll do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, please, someone, for the love of God, pay attention. Yeah. I need constant affirmation. Please. Um, so, th- welcome to the uh, affirmation podcast. Please affirm us. We always get pretty good affirmation here on this podcast, TJ. I affirm what you're saying, Paul. It's a pretty affirming podcast to do. Yes, yes, yes. We've got a pretty affirming topic tonight as well. Woof, woof. Wow. That, was a, that, that is a spot on dog. Spot woof. on. What kind of dog barks can you do, TJ? I don't know. Try, dude. Salvador's is kind of like... And then if he want if, if I tell him to shut up, he'd be like Roof 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 Yeah. <laughs> He'll start whisper barking and shit. Salvador, come here. <laughs> now Salvador's here. Come here, dude. bud. This episode's about you, huh? Come on. Come on up here for a second. It's about your species. Uh, he jumps up every time when you don't want him to, but there now that you, you want go. him to, he won't do it. Salvador camera. Who's here? Sal cam. Look at him. You're hard to get on this camera. Yeah. You're hard to get on any camera because you're always moving around. Mwah. All right, go on, bud. All right, Salvador, you're just Get out of here, Sal. <laughs> get lost. That's loser. enough. Don't like you that much. That's enough of you. That's enough of you, loser ass. <laughs> We've had enough of you. That'll get do. Get on out of here, That'll do. you sack of shit. Sal, go lay down, buddy. Salvador. Go lay down. See ya. He heard his name, dude. He's gonna, probably going to hear it a bunch of times during this show. Yeah, he's definitely going to hear it a bunch of times during this show. Because uh, today's topic is dogs. I thought we'd start off just kind dags. of... Uh, dags. Dags. Today we're talking about dags. Big, jiggly dags. All right, so I thought we'd talk a little bit about just uh, the evolution of uh, the canine race, species, whatever. Um, from... Pekingese to St. Bernard and Greyhound, dogs come in such startling variety, it's easy to forget they belong to the same species. The profusion of breeds today, at least 150, just like Pokemon, reflects, well, at least back in the early days. 150 now there's like a billion or Pokemon, more to see. Pekingese, I choose you! Um, so 150 dog breeds, at least, uh, reflects intense, purposeful breed, uh, inbreeding, interbreeding, I'm sorry, of dogs in the past 150 years, although inbreeding sometimes a thing as well. One consequence of, uh, I'm going to kind of skip this to the actual evolution part. Uh, the dog, Canis familiaris, is a direct descendant of the gray wolf, Canis lupus. Uh, in other words, dogs as we know them are domesticated wolves. Not only their behavior changed, domestic dogs are different in form from wolves, mainly smaller and with shorter muzzles and smaller teeth. 
Uh, Darwin was wrong about dogs. He thought their remarkable diversity must reflect interbreeding with several types of wild dogs. But the DNA findings say different. All modern dogs are descendants of wolves. Uh, though this domestication may have happened twice, producing groups of dogs descended from two unique common ancestors. How and why this domestication happened has been a matter of speculation. It was thought until very recently that dogs were wild until about 12,000 years ago, but DNA analysis published in 1997 suggests a date of about 130,000 years. Damn. Uh, for the transformation of wolves to dogs. This means wolves began to adapt to human society long before humans settled down and began practicing agriculture. Um, This earlier timing casts doubt on the long-held myth that humans domesticated dogs to serve as guards or companions to assist them. Rather, say some experts, dogs may have exploited a a niche they discovered in early human society and got humans to take them in (coughs) and out of the cold. Um, I mean, if you think about it, dogs and humans, especially early humans, I mean, they had a pretty similar sort of social structures. Uh, they were pack animals. We social were animals, tribal yeah. animals. Um, you know, we were pack hunters. They were pack hunters. So it could have just been the case like, hey, our interests kind of align. We're smarter than you, but you're faster and have big fucking sharp teeth. So maybe it was just a matter of like, I mean, to this day, you know, hunters use dogs, you know, for tracking and all this other stuff and retrieving stuff and even hunting down prey. Like they have dogs that are bred to take down wild boars and shit. I mean, it's strange to me that there's still so much kind of so many questions about this because I don't know that I buy just like it was convenient because there's so many ways in which dogs fit well into our lives and and yeah, provide especially now benefits and there's benefits to those <laughs> dogs as well i mean there are certain types of dogs on this little chart you've got up here that without human intervention wouldn't be able to survive in the wild well it's like right you see a lot of nature documentaries you see like these animals have these symbiotic relationships like there's like certain like sharks or there's fish that just swim and just live on these sharks and it's kind of, i think it's kind of some just similar with dogs where it's like They've just evolved to need us, and then they've, and then obviously we've had artificial selection with dogs to make dogs certain ways. Like the most docile dogs will be bred, so they'll be good companions. Or this kind of dog will be bred, so it does this. I mean, we've altered that too, but obviously if it goes back one hundred thirty thousand years. No one was just selecting the dogs. Yeah, and they've but, got, may, but maybe we were in a sense. Maybe we're saying the friendliest dogs can come to our camp. The the, the other ones we kill or just drive off. Well, I mean, like uh, I, I've even heard it said that like uh, it was probably a lot of like the the rejects. From the wolf pack. That could make sense. Like dogs that couldn't cut it in the wolf pack kind of wormed their way into human society. Like, well, maybe the wolves, maybe I'm not useful enough for the wolves, but maybe these fucking humans. Right. I can actually, I have some uh, well, obviously they were some expo- value. I mean, it's pretty clear at whatever the reason, they, they exploited an opportunity. But the I mean, species the, saw an opportunity. There was a lot of fucking poverty and hunger and stuff in the early days of humanity and for an animal to get a share of that there must have been some benefit they were providing well i was i mean i was thinking that maybe they were they were just helping on hunts and shit well they're also very alert animals a lot of times like a dog will they have better hearing than humans they have better sense of smell than humans they can kind of sense trouble uh, and you know and in, in those ways especially I mean, back in primitive times where like people would be like i could be attacked in any moment and today i mean dogs uh understand what we want from like we have better nonverbal communication with dogs than we do with our closest primate relatives like chimpanzees and shit sure like if you point at something to a dog uh the dog has a i know some dogs (laughs) they don't get pointing but a lot of dogs understand pointing like hey look at this thing the dog's like oh he's pointing i understand that a chimp doesn't get it if you point to something to a chimp the chimp's just like what? What? No. What are you talking about? Because it doesn't even occur to the chimp like he's trying to show me something. He's trying to help me out. Dogs get it. Dogs can also. I mean, like, there's been studies that show that they can uh, read our facial expressions and shit. Like, they know when we're angry. They know when we're sad. Oh, they it's know not all just our facial stuff. expressions. They can read the tone of our tone voice of and the timbre of the argument or crying or whatever's going on. Dogs can sense that, and it affects them too. They right. they want to they want to help. They want to. You'll see a dog like if you're crying. It's it's real often that a dog will come up to you when you're crying, try and lick your face, try and lay with you, because they understand that you're in pain. They don't necessarily understand why. 
Yeah. But they've learned to re- read the emotional life of humans and, in fact, are affected by it as well. People that have real high-strung personalities tend to have high-strung dogs. Oh, yeah. I've definitely seen where, uh, I mean, it's, it's a common thing that's talked about, and it's very anecdotal, I guess, but I, I, I personally believe it that, you know, some of what your personality is does rub off on your pets. To some extent, it does. Yeah, your proclivities and stuff, because your pet, think about it. Your friends, your family, as an adult, when you've got a dog, they have more access to you than almost anybody in the world. True. Like, even even if you have um, a fucking significant other that you live with, there's a good chance that your dog is with you more than that person is. Because they're always around. They don't have jobs. They don't have to leave. They don't go on errands and shit. They're always there. So when the other is gone... So that dog is really intimately in tune with what's going on with you. And the way you are is going to rub off on them. I'm a nervous person. Like, I have a lot of anxiety and shit. I'm kind of wound tight a lot of the time. And that would describe pretty much every dog I've had as an adult. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And Salvador, he's a fucking conniving, sneaky little son of a bitch. I feel like I'm a little conniving and sneaky. Sure. Um, I'd say so. Another thing is, too, that uh, Salvador, um, he'll, like, bark at... He'll fucking he'll bite at the TV when other dogs are on there and shit. I've never had another dog even any react animal, to any shit almost on a any TV. animal he goes after. Yeah, but yeah. If there's if there's an animal on the TV like a chicken, especially if it's another dog though, like he's literally bitten. He's gonna destroy that TV one day. There's gonna come a day where something that's just he's super pissed ass gonna come on that TV and he's just gonna jump at it. I'll tell you, there's something that fucking Yujiro trains Salvador to do. It's like because Yujiro barks at any noise outside. Anyone comes to the door, he's. <laughs> Because you dress like a leaf like, broke outside. Ruh, 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 ruh. Oh, dude, my like I always know when my neighbors get back because you Jero's instantly barking at them. He's like right by the front door barking at the fucking neighbors. They're bringing their trash can. He's barking at that. The wind is too loud. He's barking at that. The dog, my, my fucking dog, barks at literally every fucking. I'll thing. tell you another thing that kind of goes to that whole uh, dogs absorbing their owner's personality thing is uh, my uncle. He had a friend who um, was going out of town and he wanted uh, my uncle to watch his dog. And uh, he had all this stuff. He gave like this big list of like the dog's afraid of this and the dog's afraid of this and the dog's afraid of this. And he doesn't like when you do this and he doesn't like when you do that. And it's all this stuff. And he gets wow. real freaked out by this and da 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 da. Yeah. This big list of things. The dog is just like riddled with neuroses and shit. And my uncle said like none of that was even the case. Like it was just, it was just projecting on right. The dog. So it was just like the guy who owned the dog was neurotic. Right. So, like, when he saw those things, he freaked out, and the dog just picked up on it, like, oh, shit, this is something to be scared of. What is, what is like, the weirdest thing about your, your dog that you currently have, or any dog that you know of? Like, you know, like, what quirk, personality, neuroses, like, what about an actual thing? I mean... As far as, like, what would you say? Salvador, I, just, I don't even know what's normal. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. that's the thing about dogs, is, like, I feel like every dog has a pretty fucking unique personality. But when, there's there's always that one thing that like that really sticks out to you about. I mean, it sticks out to me just how fucking continuously enraged he gets at stuff on the TV. Yeah, I think that would probably be uh, probably be some cool. of the positions I see him laying down in. Sometimes I'm just like, how is that fucking Dude, remotely comfortable? I remember you asking to watch Salvador one time, and like this one we lived in Ohio, and uh, so like anyway, we always wanted to go upstairs. Remember that. So I was watching a show because I'm like, like, let's Salvador. I'm like, okay, because like you're worried that him and Yujiro would fight, which they did for a minute, but they didn't give a shit after that. But like every five minutes, Salvador come down the stairs, and he would slink back down. He think I'd be distracted, and he'd be like, and he'd be really sneaky. I'd be like one, two, and I'm like, stop. And your dog would fucking. He is such a fucking sneaky ass dog. I'll watch him just do shit. Like I used to like go into rooms and turn lights off, and like how long until Salvador fucking sneaks in this room? Then he'd come in the door. He like he'll be all slinking around. I'm like, hey, Salvador. <laughs> <laughs> run, run out of the room as quick as it's like you little fucking shit dude I remember um, dude like sometimes I'll be out there on the porch smoking and I'll look inside cause I can kind of see through the window the yeah. kitchen table and I'll just see him standing in there in the kitchen table I'm just like yep little son of a bitch and I'll go in there and he'll just be like down on the floor as quick as could be when he hears the door fucking jingle yeah sometimes I'll just walk out and catch him on that table he loves to be up on that table looking for something like what's up here. Also, the fact that you can't walk Salvador. Oh, yeah, that is pretty weird. Like he's too neurotic to walk. Yeah. And that's not me putting anything on him because I'm fine. You know, I'm, I, but it's like 
He's like he's weird because he's such a homebody. Like he's scared of leaving the house. Yeah, he doesn't like going places. Yeah, like if you fucking take him out on a leash, the entire time he's gonna be pulling to go back home. He's like, I don't like this. Fuck this. Let's go back. He'll home. do it for a while. Then then he'll just put his butt down. He's like, like, nope, I've gone yeah. too far. He'll get to a point where he just he's like, no, I will not. I'm not going no further than this. This is bullshit. I'm scared. I want to go back home. Um, but if I take him to like uh, the boarding place, we take him to when we go out of town. He's scared in the car a little bit, but when he actually gets there, he's, like, super excited. Like, he runs... Last time I was there, he just, like, ran back in there. Like, it was like, all right, Salvador, bye. And he just runs out and he's just like, <laughs> fuck, you. Boom, fuck yeah. you, I'm gone, you know? <laughs> there's, like, treats and shit. Yeah, he's like, well, I mean, he's like, there's other dogs back there, which yeah. he normally hates, but for some reason, in the context of being boarded, he likes other dogs. I know, that's weird, dude. Like, it's not his place. It's right. a territorial yeah. thing. He's neutral and he doesn't have us around to feel like he needs to be protective or anything, right. so he's just on his own and... He loves running around with other dogs in that context. Yeah, dude, with Yujiro, like, I can't even walk him next to other dogs. You've seen how Yujiro is. Like, oh, Yujiro hates, 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 he hates, hates other being animals. Dogs being around. Like, he's he's gotten better in his old age, but yeah, same thing. If you take him to a boarding place, like, he'll be a lot more chill. Like, okay, I'll, I'm, I'm here. I mean, you still can't let him, like, play unsupervised with other dogs, but, like, he's, it's like, it's true. He's, the dogs are way more chill. Yeah, well, Salvador, I mean, like, we let him go on big runs with other dogs and he'll just go out and play and have a, have fun. Apparently. I mean, I'm not there to see it because the second I'm around, he doesn't want to be around other dogs. Cause he's like, gets like nervous or some shit. And I'm like, we saw it was when I brought you Jiro over. Like he started to snap and they had to snap each other a couple of times. He's like, I remember you. You're fine. Ah, oh, okay. It's you. All right. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Dinor, I don't know that he knows he's a dog. I think that's true of a lot of dogs, but Dinor doesn't know how to be a dog. When he meets new dogs, they want to sniff his ass, which is a pretty typical way that dogs. Yeah, Dinor is pretty scared of that. He's a, he's terrified of other dogs when he first meets them. He doesn't want them anywhere near him. He doesn't want to have anything to do with them. He doesn't. I've never really like with these dogs here that he lived with for a while. He would sniff their asses sometimes. But I've never seen him do that in a social context with a dog he doesn't know. He doesn't even want it. He doesn't want them doing it to him. He doesn't want them in his space. Yeah, total recluse. Yep. So he's not a fan. But he loves people, though. People on the other end, he would go to anybody. Like, if there was somebody malicious that wanted to kill Dinor, all they'd have to do is show up and call him. Come here, doggy. Come on, Dinor. He'd be just like, (laughs) they could have the gun pointed at him. You know? It's me. So he, I think he just thinks he's a he's some kind of hairy little person, and his job is to lay around the house or some shit. I've never seen a dog that goes more ballistic than Dinor. Maybe I should put a picture of Dinor up while we're talking about. Yeah, it. throw up his googly eyed ass. Let me just find it real quick. See, he doesn't even. I we don't even know what he is, honestly. Like what breed and shit. Do they have a dog DNA test you can take? Yeah, I know. We've wanted to do it with him. Yeah, this is Dinor, and like he goes. I mean, like, if when he's he wants to be like on people, but he doesn't want to stay even remotely still. He wants to sit. He wants to lay on you and then com- constantly be shifting and rolling around and moving and changing position. Like you can't just hold Dinor. Eventually, like I've gotten to the point now where he'll cuddle with me on the bed when I'm just chilling in there watching TV or something. He'll eventually lay down next to me and put his head on me. But that's as close as you get with Dinor. Yeah. Him and like, cause he's just a, he's like a little ballistic fucking psycho. Does Dinor sleep on your like, bed? Does it? Or, or he, does he no, sleep he's got it. He usually sleeps on. I mean, he gets up. He doesn't like sleeping on our bed. He likes to sleep near it. So he's got his own little spot, but he can come and go. Sometimes we'll, he'll sleep on the bed. Oh, dude, you drill's eighty pounds, and his ass always like, and his tail is like, put the dog on the bed. I'm like, I don't want you drill my, because he takes up so much fucking space, and they always like fucking lay at these weird ass angles. I'm like, you I can't fucking, <clears throat> and he'd be fucking snoring and shit and having these crazy dreams and like running into me. I'm like, God damn, I want this dog in the fucking bed. Is that what I sleep in your bed? Um, very, very occasionally. Um, a little, a little slink in there. Yeah, I mean, usually it's because he snuck up. Uh, and usually he can only do it if only if only me or only Chelsea is in bed. If we're both in bed, like he might be able to get away with sneaking up for like a few minutes, but the second that he the second one of us tries to roll and it's he's not there, lasting. it's like yeah, it's like get off. Get the fuck off of bed. <laughs> yeah, you know. But if it's just like sometimes if it's just me or something, I might fall asleep and wake up and see that he's been laying on the other side of the bed for you know however long, and it's not a big deal then. 
Uh, we try to avoid it because, in the, it, honestly, it used to happen more, but at this place it's less because we got sand in the backyard. Like, because it gets so wet around here, they, a lot of the backyard has been stocked with sand, and that yeah. shit just clings to him, and then it gets on our bed, and it's like, you don't want to sleep on a sandy bed. Fuck so no, dude. We pretty much try to keep him down from there nowadays. I, I look at Dinor and I just see all of uh, I see a lot of my own personal problems reflected in him. So I know there's got to be some truth to that. He's just wound up. He's filled with little pointless anxieties about things that ultimately are meaningless. He's um, he hates routine being broken. Like he's a very routine based dog. He likes to expect like what's going to happen and when and when it doesn't. He gets all fucking worked up about it. These are all things that, is like... Is there a sound you can make that makes him go away if he's pissing you off? Yeah, it's A. You go, A! A! Yep. That's it's, the... You gotta get that loud with it, too, but that's what he reacts to, and it's probably just out of fucking yeah. habit. Every... Because every... Oh, dog, the naughty jar with Dine Armor, that, yeah, too. Yeah, there was, like, a jar you There's can shake. There's a jar you can shake. We kind of gave up on... He's mellowed, believe it or not, since he was a fucking puppy, and we've got better cues and shit with him. That doesn't really... With isn't. Salvador, uh, if I if I want to give him a mild, like, go on, it's kind of like... Tsh, yeah. Tsh. If I really want to fucking get him the fuck away from me, I have to fake a sneeze. I'd be like... Psh. Yeah. You know? Psh. Do you remember and then he just boom bolts? Do you remember fucking Yujiro's like, is the best though? Oh, dude, f- 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 put up uh, Yujiro's picture. Yeah, when I talk about this. Dude. Yujiro's, um, that's not him. That's him licking Scotty. But here's a more majestic, a majestic picture. old man Yujiro. See that drool coming down. That old fucker. Look at him drooling like a motherfucker. But the way you get Yujiro to leave is you dude. have to actually make a fart noise. Y- you can do. <laughs> And he'll run away or water bottles, dude. Like if you put a oh, that's right. Ujiro's always been scared dude, of I'll, water bottles. I'll, sometimes when he falls asleep, I'll, I'll, I'll take my water bottle. I'm um, drinking. I'll put it right next to him in bed. And he'll wake up and he'll like literally just jump out of the bed. He's like, "What the fuck is this?" Dude, he'll actually chew poor them. Though. Ujiro. Dude, he'll actually chew them up though. If you put a toy around it, he'll chew it. But the minute he realizes it's a water bottle, he's like, "Yeah," because they have some toys that they have like water bottles in them. He'll chew them up, no problem. Yeah, he'll chew them, but then when he re- realizes that what's inside is a water bottle, he's like, wait a minute. Holy shit. I don't know why he's afraid Soylent of Soylent Green is people, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. another thing. Like, when I look at you, my favorite Yujiro story is that is when he, that, that, that night you and I were filming some shit. Some, oh, yeah. One of those movie reviews. And fucking Yujiro, I'm real reactive to shit. Like, I can get, I have a kind of a weak stomach for certain things. And I can get real, like, you saw you saw it on the 24-hour show. Like, Scotty just l- let me look at that spam, and I was heaving. Like, I, there's certain things that skeeve me. This fucking dog just, like, walks up, like he usually does. You know, when he's around, he'll walk up next to you. And you hear this horrible fucking noise, dude. Like, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> and I look down, and there's just, like, this ocean of vomit. Just, like, right down by me and TJ's feet. And the smell of it, like, just boosh, like, hits me in the face like a fucking megaton of nuke, you know? And I'm like, oh, God, immediately my stomach is like, whoa, I'm getting woozy. So I get up, I'm like, I got to get out of this room, man. I got to go. So I go upstairs. We're in kind of the basement area of TJ's house. I go upstairs, and I'm going to go into the kitchen to get a glass of water and, like, chill out. I take a left into the kitchen (laughs) <laughs> and there's like an equally huge puddle of diarrhea in the middle of the kitchen. I almost step in and the smell is even more putrid than the puke. I almost fucking like I almost puked just from Yujiro's fruits, dude. So, I mean, that that's another thing, though, is like we put up with a lot of disgusting shit. Having oh, my animals. God. I remember uh, one time oh, me God. and Scotty were living in a. Uh, Townhouse, like a th- one of those three story oh. shotgun style kind of townhouses where it's got three stories, but they're all real narrow, you know? Right. And uh, the bottom floor was just like a little uh, like a den. F- foyer area and shit. And uh, we, I, I was, remember I was walking down there one day because sh- I had my little shooting room down there. And uh, I went to walk down there and like <sighs> the entire bottom of the fucking foyer, like, was just covered in like an ocean of fucking diuretic <laughs> shit and piss too yeah and i'm just like oh my god and i went and i got scotty i'm like scotty you gotta clean this up dude 
Has your dog done this? And that is the, that's I the am, rule, oh. too. Like, I will clean up a solid dog <coughs> turd from an accident in the house. Right. But I am not dealing with no ocean of dude, fucking that was disgusting disc- diarrhea. I remember shit. I start to this day, dude, it took me like an hour to clean that up. Forty five minutes to an hour. Yeah. You remember that time you were outside and we saw like cause Yujiro, like sometimes I mean he, he had a pretty sensitive stomach. Like he'd get sick not constantly, but like reasonably often. He doesn't do it he doesn't do it anymore though, strangely, but Well, one time we were outside and uh Yujiro let loose one of those diarrhea. Oh dude, shits, it was dude. it was crazy, like he was like right by the door. He kept like begging to go outside. We're like, all right, go outside. He runs outside and literally like he gets like halfway in the yard and just like <laughs> in mid run, just like. Psh! It was like a tr- like a oh, fucking. It- you ever seen one of those uh, uh, hippopotamuses like doing the uh, the thing where they like swing their shit everywhere with their tail? Yeah. It was almost. Mucking, they call that. Yeah, it was almost the level of mucking where it was just like a huge spray of shit. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that dude. looked ridiculous, <laughs> like something from a fucking, I don't know, Seth Rogen movie or some shit. Yeah. Dinosaur's got to hang up about shitting. And I don't know what to do about it. Like, sometimes we'll take him outside, and you know he's got to shit. But he just can't find the spot. And eventually he gives up. And he'll go a whole day without shitting. And then the next day he'll take this, like, rhinoceros-sized <laughs> shit. And it's like, why did you hold it? Like, I brought you down three or four times, like, for at least 10 or 15 minutes yesterday to run around the yard and to try and piss and shit. You didn't do it all day, and then today you shit like a fucking elephant. That must be so uncomfortable to carry that much load. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's just got it in there. But he's got, he's got a weird... <laughs> I, and, and one of the things that fucks me up about dogs is I've had them my whole life. And I've, I've been the same with dogs my whole life. I talk to them. Not constantly, but I'll have conversations with Dinor when nobody else is around, usually. Because I can't stop talking no matter what, so dogs have always been good for that. And I don't know what they're understanding and what they aren't. And I wish that he could tell me what his little shit ritual is so I could help facilitate it. Like I wish that Dinor could be like, Dad, I really like to go to this one area, and if it doesn't smell great, I like to go to this other area, and then there's a third area. You know, like If he could explain the three different areas he wants to go to and why... Then I could just make shitting a totally cool thing for both of us. <laughs> Dude, having lived with Dinor, Dinor picks the most random spots to shit. Like he'd, all, he'd, he'd always shit on the bricks. And like I remember when, when Paul lived in Bellevue, he would he would like we'd walk in sometimes and Dinor would shit like the middle of the hallway. Yeah, or right by Paul's computer. He'd be like, "What the fuck, Dinor?" Yeah, I mean, it, usually he doesn't. Like he hasn't shat in the house in a long time. But when he does, it's always because he could not find a place to shit outside. Because he's just so persnickety. And then, like, yeah. we went to bed or some shit, and in, and during the night, he has an emergency situation where it's like, I've held this shit too long, it's got to come out. <laughs> and so, he, you know, he's pretty good about knowing not to shit on carpet and shit. He'll find a solid surface and shit right on it. <laughs> and it's like, why? You know, you know what the worst thing with a dog is? is? Your dog does that, which is bad enough, but whatever. It's when you fucking wake up and you're like, and you fucking step oh, in shit. Oh, man, that's the worst. Shit. Yeah, <coughs> especially if you have bare feet, which I'm luckily that doesn't happen to me too often because, you know, I pretty much wear shoes 24 seven and less Same, I'm sleeping. But- and with Dinor, the prevailing wisdom doesn't apply. Like when I talk to people about Dinor and how high strung and high energy and shit he is, they're like, you need to exercise them. And they don't understand that, like, you can't like unless I owned a big piece of property with a big ass yard that he could learn, there's no way he's ever going to be comfortable enough to be exercised in any real way. We took him to a dog park the other day, and it was a comedy of fucking errors. It was horrible. And a part of that was Louisiana's fault, because there's no grass here that isn't mud if it rains. You know what I mean? Right. So, but, none. you know, it had rained the day before. We took him down there, and I was like, all right, whatever. He'll get muddy. We'll give him a wash. He won't leave your side. Like, there, it, there's no other dogs there. Big-ass open park. He could have run around and been an asshole and sniffed around and done whatever he wants, chat wherever he wants, be a dog. He just, like, sits next to you and won't do anything. <laughs> He wants you to go play, and he wants to follow you with it. You know what I mean? Right. And then another dog shows up, and under once again, under normal circumstances, if he was a normal dog, they'd introduce each other and go on about their own business. But Dinor displays everything that that other dog like sees as submission and shit. He's scared, he's timid, and the other dog just gets worked up into a, like a fuck frenzy, basically. And by the <laughs> oh, end of it, God. this little it's a Jack Russell Terrier <laughs> trying to fuck Dinor. 
<laughs> and Dinor's just going completely nuts, rolling around in the mud and like trying to get away from him, <laughs> scooting his ass around, trying to hide his butthole from this dog. And eventually I was just like, all right, I guess that's Dinor's exercise for today. You know, I tucked him under my arm and took him home. It's like, you don't understand. The object of today's game is to avoid the rape. Yeah, he won't do it. Like, he won't play fetch outside. He won't run. He wants to fetch indoors where there's no room to fetch. But if you take him outside, he's too wound up and nervous to do it. So. Do you remember one time? Um, it was actually when we were moving houses, one of those times. I think it was uh, we were moving from. Was it was it the drive from uh from Washington to here? I think it was. So what, we didn't they flew. Well, whatever. You mean we went from from Ohio to Washington? Must have been from the we'll drive from Ohio to Washington. I don't want di- uh, when when fucking not Dino uh, when Salvador got sick. <clears throat> yeah, oh. we left Salvador. We were we we were uh drive we were making the drive the next day and uh, we left we just. We, we'd already done pack everything that been packed and stuff. We left. We knew we were bringing the dogs in their crates. So we've just left the dogs in their crates in the house the night before, you know, because we're like, OK, we're going to leave them here. We're going to go sleep and we're going to come back. And, you know, he spent the night in the crate before. But just the fact that there was nothing in the house and whatever else, it just freaked him out. Yeah. And he got fucking super sick. And, uh, like, the next day when we came there, like, he had just, like, projectile diarrhea through the fucking oh, bars oh. of the cage, <coughs> and it was just everywhere. So we we were supposed to just go in, take him, you know, was, we'll go there, we're going to take the dogs out to go to potty, we're going to load them up in the car, and we're going to, you know, start going our <coughs> way, and then it was like, nope, now we got to fucking, it took us, like, 45 minutes just to clean the results of that. And he had diarrhea that entire trip, and it was just like... So you had to keep pulling over yeah. and letting him squirt. So it was like a constant part of this cross-country trip was taking care of his accidents, trying to get out ahead of them, but usually not well, Remember, we were driving to St. Louis. Yeah, we were driving to St. Louis. And like, Louis like an Indiana and bump up, like, man, this area smells really... Like, it smells like shit around here. Yeah. And it's, it's, and it started getting like, it's just not going away. And well, it's like miles and miles. It's like 10 miles. Like, we need to pull over. There's, I think Dino, not Dino, or fucking uh, Salvador fucking shit. And we and like, oh, dude. And so he's in this crate. Salvador's covered in fucking head to toe and shit. Put up a picture of Salvador. Dude. And, and we're at a fucking like flying J or whatever. Like, no, a pilot. So we have to go in there, buy cleaning supplies. We have to take fucking uh, Salvador out. We're like rinsing Salvador off and shit, scrubbing him. He's covered in fucking shit. He's not cooperating. He's like all nervous and scared. Like we're worried he's going to fucking shit again. His crate is filled with fucking shit. So we have to fucking like 409 in, dump water and fucking get buckets and shit. It's horrible. It's fucking awful. It's nonstop. And uh, we went to my uncle's house and like the symptoms just never went away. We, had, we ended up having to take him to the vet in St. Louis. And they told us it was like just nerves and shit. And they gave us some like dog Xanax and shit. Like this will fucking calm him down. But man, it just got so fucking crazy. Um, like he was just shitting so nonstop. It was just like by the time we were in St. Louis, it wasn't like he was just shitting. It was just like his ass was just like a constant shit drip. So he couldn't go anywhere. He couldn't do yeah. anything because he was just a shit machine. Just like little diarrhea drops oh, everywhere I mean, he went. You're trying to put a diaper on him, dude, but it wouldn't work. So he just it would just tear it yeah. off. Yeah, that was probably nerves. Dinor does that same shit. He'll have nervous shits where we'll take him out if we're going to take him somewhere. Like we, that happened the other night when we brought him here for Chelsea to groom him. Yeah. We shat him. Like I took him outside. He took a big old shit, pissed, got in the car, and whined the whole way here. Just like, Rrr! and we're like, <laughs> shut up, man. Because like sometimes he'll do that. And it turned out he had to shit again. He got nervous in the car. And as soon as we got him here, he got on your front lawn and like, <laughs> another whole fucking shit. It's like, what do your nerves produce the shit? Yeah, I don't understand it. But in, in Salvador's case, I mean, man, it really fucking, it was probably the worst fight that me and Chelsea ever had was over the stress from dealing with that. Because, like, we were there, it was like the middle of the <coughs> night, neither of us had slept, we'd fucking just miserable on the road, all this shit, and dealing with Salvador, and dealing with all the other stuff that goes along with moving, and, uh... 
I'm just sitting there on the porch. I'm practically fucking dead on my fucking feet and stuff. And, uh, you know, she's just like, what are we going to do? And I'm just like sitting there in silence because I have no fucking idea what we're going to fucking do about all this. And she's like, you're stop ignoring me and all this. And like it got to the point where she just like took off down the street and uh, I had to go fucking chase her down the street to go get her to come back to the house because it was like the middle of the night in some fucking strange town and shit. <laughs> And um, like, like, you don't know anything around here. You don't know anyone around here. You know where the yeah, fuck it you're was going. Like, we just got to the point where <clears throat> it was like we weren't sure what we were going to do. I think it was like we were trying to get him to go to the bathroom, but he wouldn't go to the bathroom. And he was just had that nonstop little diarrhea drip and shit. And we were, we were just like we came to the point of just being like, like, just just let him go. Just fucking t- put him off his leash. And just let him run off. It's not our problem anymore. Jesus Christ. Uh, obviously, we didn't do that, but yeah, you fi- I think you fight. I think you finally took him to the vet the next day, and well, no, he'd already. I think he'd already been to the vet by then, or we we had plans to take him. But no, we it was sure, you guys had plans. So we weren't like, sure what to do with him in the meantime because he was just like a, you couldn't put him anywhere. We couldn't fucking keep him anywhere. We ended up having to keep him in the basement of the house because he couldn't be allowed in the house because he was just dripping shit. Dude, Uncle Guy was a fucking saint, too, because, like... I'm he, glad Uncle Guy just has, like, such a fucking... Oh, he loves animals. ...loving disposition, especially with uh, animals, because most people would probably Dude, not Salvador have tolerated that out, the way he did. Dude, Salvador shit in his house, like, ten times, at least. Oh, my God. It was more than that. It was. Just, I mean, like, like major everywhere. shits, though, where it's like, oh, this rug has to go out now. Oh, we have to turn it this way. Oh, this is ruined. <laughs> He's like ruining my uncle's house and shit. And oh my God, it was horrible. But you know, that's the thing about dogs. You put up with that shit because I don't know. I mean, I don't have, I, I have no plans in life to ever reproduce or have children. So like dogs is pretty much the closest I'm going to get to scratching any sort of parental itch. So it's just like, um, maybe that's why you put up with it. Dude. I don't know. Dogs are enough for you, TJ. You would not you would not like having kids. I agree. There's no way. Dogs are about as much bullshit as you're probably willing to put up with. Oh, you Juro. Dude, I remember the time Scotty was drunk and he was uh Oh he yeah. came home and uh I just like overheard him talking to Yujiro and shit, and it was the funniest fucking thing because he's like sitting there with Yujiro. And he's like, Yujiro's on the couch, which Scott didn't even allow at the time, but he was, Scotty was drunk, so he didn't care. And he's like, <laughs> Pretty much. He's drunk, and he's like leaning on Yujiro, and he's got his arm around Yujiro and shit. Let me just fucking put myself on um, screen so you can see this shit. He's like, oh, how did it get so high? He's like, yeah, man, let me tell you something, you yeah. Can't trust fucking none of these sons of bitches, man. <laughs> you can't trust none of them. Shadow little piece of shit, Salvador. Can't fucking trust him. Can't trust CJ. Can't trust Chelsea. You can't trust none. Of them. Only one you can trust you, Jero, is me. It's you and me, Jero. You and me versus the world, man. <laughs> me and you, Jero. You're the only one I ever truly loved, Joe. <laughs> you and me, man. Oh, you're so beautiful, man. You're fucking such a good dog, dude. I'm sorry. Sorry for all the time I didn't take you out when I was just like, oh my God, dude. Yeah. Hey, you know what, dude? I was just keeping it real, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can't even shit. Cause I it's do the same. It's a funny story. I, I don't. I, I don't drink a whole lot, so Dinor hasn't gotten a lot of that. But he gets a lot of like Paul's lonely and has nobody to talk to moments. You know what I mean? Where he's very good about. It. He'll sit there, look me right in the eye while I'm talking to him, and cock his head left and right a little bit. So you know he does his part. <laughs> the illusion of listening. Yeah. What's he trying to convey? But he's heard some shit, man. Thank goodness they can't speak English and stuff, because right. he'd he'd be a fucking liability for me. <laughs> he, it'd be like you know, they flipped the the FBI has flipped Dinor. Yeah, know? I know, dude. I'm like, oh shit. shit, dude! I'm in trouble now. Going to fucking jail on racketeering Going and to extortion. Supermax. And- but that really is the most. I think the probably the worst thing about having a dog is not being able to directly, exactly communicate simple things to them. Yeah, because it's just like there's some simple shit that you want. To tell them, like, hey, 
you know, we're coming back in an hour. So yeah. don't, so chill out. You know what I mean? You think you think their life would be a whole lot more fulfilling if they had a basic understanding of like the passage of time and like what's going on and what's happening, but they don't. They have no they have no concept of it. Yeah. Um so Scotty, why don't you talk about this fucking crazy fuck? Oh dude. The newest Papa O. This is the newest dog that any of us has. <laughs> John Luke. Jean Luke. Dude. Which I, can I just say something first of all before we, go, before go we even start talking about it? <laughs> go ahead. I don't know what the fuck you were thinking, dude. Cause the second I saw, like, they got it, they're getting a chocolate lab puppy. I'm like, they live in a fucking townhouse with no yard. Why are they doing that? That doesn't make no sense. Dude. Welcome to marriage, TJ. <laughs> yeah, dude. You think uh, Scotty had Taylor, any fucking input look, on this. That's shit? why. That is why the picture is the dog's owner, which I'm. I'm the co-owner, begrudgingly, of John Luke and Taylor. But, but here, Taylor loves John Luke. John Luke is just the fucking dog that has so much energy, and I'm just like, <coughs> like, like I'm not a good fit for that. But Taylor loves John Luke, so it's like we're stuck with him now. And labs are notorious for being really high, strong, and high energy. And like this dog literally follows Taylor around, right? Like, and he's like super responsive to her. With me, he's just like, huh? Like he looks me like like he'll still listen to me, but it's like he listens to me out of fear. He's like, oh shit, that one is here. <laughs> with her, it's like I love you. I'll do whatever you want with me. It's like I hate you, but I have to listen to you. So okay. I mean, uh, Chelsea is a dog groomer, and she grooms him, and uh, she grooms Jean Luc sometimes. And like whenever he's here, it's just like, oh my god, it's like a tornado. Yeah, it's like he's a destructive force. Like, cause he'll like he'll just barrel like there. Was, you know that little hole in the screen that my cat jumps through. <coughs> yeah, he tried to get through that, <laughs> and he's the size of Salvador. Yeah, like he's like, I'll just go through here. It's like, no, you're not. What? You're not this big. He doesn't give a shit, dude. You're huge. Yeah, I haven't been around Jean Luc recently, so he's a tornado. Yeah, he's a fucking tornado. But he was a tornado when after he was a puppy. Two, after two hours of him being here and Chelsea playing with him, like uh, she should have done it before she groomed him, honestly. But she groomed him and stuff, and I don't know how the fuck she grooms that maniac. But after that, he was so crazy. We just she just fucking had to play with him for like two hours straight, and finally, after just two hours of play. He finally starts to calm down to just normal dog levels of hyperactivity. <clears throat> so it, it was fucking. It's always crazy when he's over. Oh, dude, he's just a it, fucking and it's like monsoon. Oh, dude, Taylor will get on me. I'm like, because John Luke will do some stupid shit. I'm like, John Luke destroyed this, and she'd be like, Oh, but I'm like, fuck John Luke. He's a little asshole. She's like, Don't hate John Luke. He's a great dog. No, no, no. I'm like, just dog and go the goddamn pound. <laughs> but I mean, the reality is this: is that she loves the dog. I'll never get rid of the dog, but do I enjoy John Luke? Like, I don't say I hate him. She thinks I, she, she claims I hate him. It's like, I like John Luke when he's calm. I mean, I know it's rare and he, it's like those, when he's like, when, he, when the tr- moments of tranquility arrive and he's just chilling with you, he's great. Yeah. But it's like with labs, especially like him, I t- it's like, right now that's like 10% of the time and slowly it becomes like 50, 60, 70, like where it's like, when he's like three or four years old, he'll be a totally chill, cool dog. I mean, when I obedient. got Salvador for the first time, <coughs> uh, oh, Salvador was bad too. I mean, because Salvador also lab. He's black. He's got black lab. He's not full bred. I think he's like black lab and some other shit. Probably like some pit bull or something. Not sure what's in there. But um, like, there was not a day that went by that he did not destroy at least one thing. And like, so just a short list of ones I remember. Pulled up the carpet. Yeah. In our room. And on the stairs. Chewed up the stairs, the banister. Just chewed it right up. I think he ripped a Dude, hole in it at one point. He, he, he was chewing the, he destroyed, the baseboard and the joists. Yeah, he destroyed the fence out back. He just pulled out <coughs> boards. Uh, he destroyed a pair of Chelsea's glasses, which is something I wouldn't even think a dog would be attracted to. Razor blades. Yeah, he destroyed uh, shaving razors. And pretty much ate everything but the blades. Dude, we had to replace like 10 fence boards. He's literally Salvador. eaten cans of food. Can and all? Yeah, just eaten the can. <laughs> and I'm just like, how are you even alive? Uh, he's, he ate 
Chelsea plays this stupid, or she used to anyway, play these stupid publishers clearinghouse things. Yeah. Like online publishers clearinghouse sure. and win little prizes and shit. The only prize of significance of any real value that she ever won was she won a Fitbit. And he destroyed the fuck out of that after two weeks of her having it. Um, and you know what? The fucked up thing was he'd act so proud of everything he destroyed for the most part. Yeah. But then occasionally he would show a sign of guilt. Yeah. And I remember like he destroyed like Fitbits and glasses and, and uh, you know, he chewed up a fucking book of like old photos and memories of Chelsea's and shit. Just destruction, destruction, destruction. Yeah, and no remorse. And almost no, almost never even the slightest <laughs> hint of remorse. Just like, hey, guys, what's up? Yeah. One day we came down there, and he was acting so fucking guilty. So guilty. It's like, what did you do? And we found out that he was guilty because he destroyed a little fucking 39-cent fucking hair tie. <laughs> and we're like, of all the <laughs> shit... That you've destroyed Dude, and I, felt nothing. I would love to know the thought process. This is what you feel bad about? <laughs> the hair tie? Chews up a third, like Fitbit, gone. I wouldn't give a shit Cell if you phone, gone. Up a whole Computer fucking gone. thing of hair ties. 30 nights of hair tie. Oh, fuck. I fucked up. Oh, shit. Oh, no. oh what the fuck? What have I done? Dude, I remember well, I had my bed like lower down on the floor. Shoot a hole in my bed. That's another one. <coughs> yeah, oh, yeah. You, you Jiro did that, too. But, like... When we lived in Illinois briefly, I had uh, like my bed was like lower down on the floor, and like Ujiro was able to get on my bed, and he would just rip up my blanket almost like, I swear to God, I brought like twenty blankets because Ujiro would just rip my blanket up. By the time Ujiro did, he chew up one of our wallets. Uh, he chewed up my wallet. He chewed up all my credit cards. Uh, you were actually doing a stream one time, and he chewed up the cable, the Cat Five. Oh cable. yeah, I was doing a stream, and the stream crashed. I'm like, what happened? And then I looked around, and I found that Ujiro had chewed through the cord. <clears throat> oh my yep. god, dude. This is the thing that they like people who like want to own dogs, like, you know, dogs a lot of the time are great, man. They're so friendly, they love you so much. But they have their moments. They're loyal, they're fucking dedicated, they're cool, you know, they're they're fun to play with and they're great personalities and they do funny stuff and they're whimsical and wonderful. But man, there are fucking serious goddamn downsides. Well, for every one of those moments, there's at least three angry, exasperated moments where you have to clean something up that they've done Shitting or deal with house, them at a time where you're house, busy. Destroying things. So yeah, <coughs> like Ashley's now, still- Now Salvador's got, I mean like, we all, he almost never has an accident inside now. It's really like the puppy stages where that's it's huge. Yeah. Like- it's pretty rare that he destroys anything he's not supposed to. It's very occasional now. He's mellowed out. Yeah, I mean, like, he's mellowed out a lot. But when we first got him, he, you know, and he was just a pound puppy and shit. I mean, like, he was fucking a disaster. Oh, remember, yeah. remember him with the food? Disaster. I mean, he still bad with his food. But remember how bad he was? Like, I, like, I'd come in the room, and Salvador would, like, snap at me. Oh, yeah. And, and, him, and, and him, you fed him. Salvador is still, like, way too possessive. That's one of the things that we tried to work to get him to reduce. And, like... He gets all protective of his food and yeah. his bones and shit. Yeah, I mean, like, certain things... Like, certain things he's okay with. But if, like, s certain of his possessions, like... Like, he, if he had, like... When we first <coughs> got him that turtle shell and shit, like, the cat would come near to be like... <laughs> like, the cat's like, that coming cat for don't his want that fucking... Fucking plastic turtle shit. I, I had to battle Salvador. I mean, like, I was like, like, no, we, got, we had to fucking make him think with, with people and food. Because he, like, I, I'm guessing the life Salvador had before, like, it was either a bunch of dogs or they were, like, really, like, he had to be really possessive about his food for some reason. Like, yeah. Because, like, anytime well, the we got The weird thing was, when I first got him, I tested him for food aggression. It, is, it didn't have with you. And uh, he didn't have any. Like, I, I did the hand test. I'm like, put my hand near the food. If you do it, he doesn't do it, though. If anyone else does it, he'll do it. Well, he'll, he'll even get that way with me sometimes. If you do it, probably a lot. But you know what I think really fucking kicked it in is uh, he went after Yujiro's food at one point and got attacked. And ever since then, it's like he's had that. Because I guess he he saw Yujiro doing it. He's like, oh, that's how you got to do it. You got to fucking protect oh, yeah. defend he's super, your shit. Jiro's like super Yujiro aggressive. Yujiro was food. never aggressive towards people with his food. So I didn't know that he had that issue until we brought another dog in the house. And then Yujiro's like, fuck you. Stay the fuck away from my food. Oh, dude. I, I knew about that because when, we, when uh, Grendel was living with Yujiro, 
and this was this is the first time we ever did it. Like Jerry was still like in his puppy phase, and I, I, I was trying to like you were trying to give Grendel a piece of chicken, and like Jerry just snapped at Grendel. Like, yeah, and you guys were like, oh my god, you yeah, what are you? Oh, dude, TJ was so paranoid about like Grendel being around you, Jerry. And the funniest shit happened like every time like is the door closed, Grendel can't be anywhere near you, Jerry. You Jerry will will harm him. You Jerry's gonna do something to him. Like no, he's not. And TJ's like, no, it's gonna happen. 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 Then finally one day, TJ just leaves his door cracked, so Grendel gets out. That's Grendel, by the way. I come home, and Grendel and Jerry are just chilling on the couch together. Yeah. Totally fine. And it, well, the thing was, Jerry actually loves Grendel. Like the only dog that Jerry genuinely loves is Grendel. Like that's the only dog he can he wants to play with or like he really loves. I mean, he's fine with the John Luke and shit now. I mean, he kind of has that, a good relationship with him. Besides John Luke, Grendel's the only dog. Yeah. Like, cause him and Salvador, like, they always kind of just said, like, eh, I'm just going to tolerate you. Yeah, I mean, like, I think Ujiro... I, think <laughs> I don't Sal- know, dude. Salvador I saw always... those two faggots sucking each other's dicks a few yeah. times when we lived together. Sometimes so they I got don't know. I mean, well, yeah, sometimes. But, I mean, it was never, like, consistent. Salvador... Like, they're I never best buds. You Salvador, know? Yeah. I think, loves Ujiro more than Ujiro loves Salvador. I think Salvador's like, yeah, Ujiro, my friend. And Ujiro's like, oh, God, not this asshole. <coughs> not him. Anybody but him. Him and Dinor I'll, didn't. I mean, they interacted a fair amount, but it seemed like Dinor kind of just like always kind of just kept his space from each other. Like I don't like that one. And eventually, they got to the place where they were kind of like playing tug of war and shit. Yeah, I mean, they would occasionally they would play, play a little bit, but yeah, most of the time, Dinor gave uh, Ujiro a wide berth. Ujiro's an asshole with other dogs. He's I a grumpy old guy. You know, oh, he, dude, he, he was young. He was, shit. he was the same way when he was. Young. What are you playing, yeah. TJ? What am I playing? Yeah. There's nothing playing. It's not a GIF. What were you snapping? You look like you were dancing to something. What was that about? I don't know. Okay. All right. I just thought it was in response. There's some articles about dogs. You want to read some of that shit? Yeah, uh, we could take a look at some dog articles. Uh, Haven't told. I mean, I could could definitely go on. I don't know. There's there's more stories, but. Some dogicles. We could be here all day at that rate. Um, So let's uh, just take a look at a couple of uh, dog-related articles. Uh. So, oh, I did want to kind of like, uh, I meant to do this earlier, but we could take a look at it now because uh, we were talking about the origins of the dog. And this is uh, all dogs descended from the gray wolf here. So I thought it'd be, I thought it's kind of fun to look at the gray wolf and then look at. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I definitely see a lot of dinor in the gray wolf. I don't know about the rest of you guys as dogs, but I definitely see. Yeah. I mean, like there's a <laughs> oh, real yeah. dinor esque quality. An image. Let's just uh, put, put them side by side here. Uh, this is. No, oh, yeah. Fierce. Dinor. Basically a wolf. Dinor. And then. Gray wolf. Yep. Dinor. Gray wolf. <laughs> I mean, both equally I straight mean, terror into my heart. I mean, see that. I mean, like, Dinor looks a little tougher, maybe. Yeah. I mean, look. Wolf, but this thing pops over the hill. You're kind of like, oh, shit. Dinor pops over the hill. You pull up Dinor real quick. Yeah. I mean, I'm dead. You I'm like, run. Fu- I mean, I don't There's know. There's no point even running. Why even bother, dude? Just make your peace. He's got the thousand yard stare. He does. Look at him. He's seen Dinor some shit. doesn't give a and fuck, in two dude. different directions, too. We've forgotten to, uh, to kick him out of the room when we fucked before, so he has definitely seen some shit. Like, oh, yeah. There's a hollowness in those eyes. I've never... I mean, like, I've seen if shit. Salvador's in the room, we don't really... Yeah, what's the protocol with that shit with you guys? Like, I don't... I'm, I just let him be in there. We first, like, at first, we used to kick... Cause it, when he was a puppy, he would have jumped right up on the bed while we were fucking and yeah, shit. Yeah, that yeah, would yeah. not... That, you know, Get so out we of had here. to kick him out. So that was the routine for a while. But then slowly but surely, it's as like he mellowed... LA. Yeah. He just kind of goes to a corner of the room and watches the proceedings, <laughs> I guess. He's like, I see. And, uh... Yeah, I mean, I don't really... I'm not really... I don't really... I mean, I just... I forget he's even in there, honestly. I mean, the only time I interact with Ujiro or... I mean, John Luke's always put up before that. But if it's, if Ujiro happens to be in the room, it's like, go away. And he usually realizes, like, uh, they're just being visible. So you don't want the... Uh, you don't want the audience. I mean, I don't really care. I no, mean, I, just, I just tell him to go lay down. If, if, if sometimes, like, those, like they'll, they'll be excited. So you don't really give a shit if he's laying down in the same room because it's like, whatever, it's a dog. Well, I, I mean, like, sometimes like, they, they don't realize what you're doing. They're trying to get your attention. Like, oh, they'll be, right. like, wagging his tail. It's like, no, go away. Salvador pretty much knows, like, oh, they're doing that stuff now. I'm going to go lay in my bed. Right. Yeah, like, I'm going to go lay in my crate. I don't like and this. And he just goes and lays down and puts his head like this. <laughs> you know? <coughs> don't interrupt this shit. Like, Dinor, when we would kick him out of the room when we would fuck, like, I think he thinks I'm hurting her some, like, I think he, because he would, like, after we were done, I would forget Dinor was there, you know, and then I'd hear at the door, like, 
<laughs> and I go let him in, and he goes straight to Ashley, like, "Oh God, <laughs> are you okay?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's beating her. Yeah, he. I don't know. Like, and that's another one of those things that I wish I could just explain to him. Like, it's cool, dude. She's cool with it. We're both into this. Yeah, it's a it's thing good. we do. Just go lay in the fucking living room. You know, you're good. You're good. If you had a female dino, you'd be getting your fuck on too. So, it is what it is. Okay, so uh, here's something I pulled. Oh shit! What's this? Donald Trump's acting attorney general. Or whatever. Okay. Damn. Well, that's breaking uh, news. Maybe a story for Flash, Flash Fried Fry. tomorrow. So who's this? So this is uh, Ugly Dogs. Okay. How yeah. do I get this stupid breaking news shit off of here? I don't want it. No. Dude, the news is breaking too hard for you to make it go away. Like, TJ, look at this shit. It takes up half the damn screen. Breaking. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. Um. This is Archie. This is Archie. He's a Chinese crested and Chihuahua. So we're looking at ugly dogs. Jeez. Chinese cresteds are like so, traditionally like some of the ugliest. Looking yeah, dogs. that's an ugly sucker. But he's I don't know, man. He's ugly, but kind of cute. Ugly. Kind of supposed like a deformed Chihuahua. Yeah. Ugly. I guess they don't have a picture of so Brutus. Brutus. That kind of sucks. Oh no, he looks retarded. Chase, yeah, that's a Chinese Chase, crested. Another Chinese crested. I mean. Uh, why would you selectively breed a dog yeah. down that line? He's like a Down syndrome dog. Like, like oh yeah, fuck, it looks dude? even more ridiculous. Let's let's make it even worse. Yeah, most of the uh, ugliest dogs tend to be Chinese crested, like this one, oh, Ellie, Ellie May. May. She's pretty ugly. Looks like fucking Yoda or some shit. Why can't they keep that long ass tongue in their mouth either? I don't know. Like a lot of dogs, if they ugly get, I am. If they get older and shit. They kind of uh, get to a point. They can't do it anymore. Yeah. Where they can't do dude, it, dude. Would it be like abusive if they pierce this dog's ears, dude? Because this dog would look dope with like a big pirate earring. So this is what a Chinese ears. crescent is supposed to look like under ideal conditions. Whoa, that looks nothing <laughs> like it. <laughs> There's a little, little interbreeding going yeah. on then with some of these. Elwood, don't see it. So this is Himasabu. Him Himasabu. 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 Icky. <laughs> I mean, not a particularly attractive or ugly. kind of like in the middle. Does he have an eagle's wing? Oh, I guess that's actually icky there. That's icky. Oh, that's icky. So this is not icky. Himasabu. It's is icky, icky. Just a mutt, A I mutt. Guess. Don't even know well, what it go is. go down? Josie or something? That's not ugly. That's, not, that's, just that's how they look. What yeah. the fuck? Stupid fucks. <laughs> oh, what? damn, Martha. No, Martha's ugly. I think Martha was the one above. That oh, thing, that's Mo. Mo. This Mo's is Mo. Mo's ugly as fuck, here. dude. Mo. Whoa. This what the fuck? Um, that's oh, peanut, That's dude. terrifying, dude. Dude, Peanut is actually pretty dope, though. Because, like, can you imagine Peanut being in the room if you're smoking a J? Yeah, peanut you're like, oh, chill, dude, fuck, fuck, dude. Oh, fuck, no, dude. Peanut would freak. Here you go, Peanut. Take a hit, bro. Peanut's Scotty always Scotty said chill. Peanut would freak him out. Oh, dude, he's not ugly. Oh, he's retarded, dude. That's Penny, not fair. He's Penny is partially retarded. Penny's retarded, dude. It's okay. Got that same tongue thing. What's what's so bad about this dog? Uh, uh, well, hold on, go back up. It's like Igor of dogs. Dude. Oh, it's got a hunchback. Yeah, he's got like a deformity or something. He's well, like a hunchback of Notre Dog. <laughs> the hunchback of Notre Dog. Did I feel bad making fun of a dog though? Oh, his I, name is Quasimodo. Oh shit. Too. Okay. He's special, dude. He's a special dog. Yeah, you know, whatever. Like what the fuck even? This dog just looks like fun. that. Dog looks badass, dude. Looks like the Doctor Emmett Brown of dogs or some shit. One fuck sausages. Why is that dog ugly? Because he got a big old tongue. I don't know. A lot of these dogs, I, I would reach it. I mean, uh, this dog just needs some maintenance, dude. Yeah, he yeah. just needs a hairbrush run through him. Whoa, uh, scamp. Okay, scamp. That's You're not ugly. scamp. That's oh, that's sweepy Rambo. The sweepy Rambo. What a fucking weird name. What's going on with your eyes, dog? Come on, clearly a Rambo. blind dog or something. But yeah, whatever. <laughs> he looks like he's well taken care of. What's wrong with this dog? Is he, this the stubbiness? I'm guessing. Wally. Whoa. Yoda. Yoda that dude. looks like roadkill. <laughs> this dog looks dead already. Alive I am. Oh, this dog's got problems. <laughs> That's a badass dog oh, right whoa. there, dude. Ja, ja. Ja, ja. Dude, I don't care who you are. That's huge, a badass huge, dog. Huge, huge, huge underbite. And yeah. the tongue just lolling uselessly <laughs> to the side. <laughs> so that's pretty much the ugly dogs. Wow. Uh, here's uh, the biggest, biggest dog. dogs. Oh, yeah, dude. I love big dogs. The St. Bernard, dude. I don't know kilograms, but apparently they can weigh between 73 and 117 of them. 
and have heights. That's a whole lot of kilograms. Yeah, man. Them grams is killer. So 73 kilograms to pounds. We're going to get you that right now, too. Give so me that shit. 160 pounds. So that's set what 73 kilograms is? Yep, 73 kilograms. And what's the... Uh, the, the max is 117 kilograms. 117, Jesus. Let's so see. That's pretty fucking big. That would be... Fucking... Thing's taking a second. Come on. Give me the information I need. 255 pounds. Jesus. Wow. That's bigger than most people. I've weighed Except less than that. Except for in Mississippi. <laughs> I, I can't remember a time when I did, but... Uh, Newfies, yeah. Newfoundlands. The fucking baby. Dude. They get up to uh, 118 kilograms. That's a cute-ass dog, though. The, especially the baby. Just a little ball of fluff. I've heard the new, they're uh yeah they're like water dogs. Oh yeah, and they're, shit. they have like water coats and, and shit. Uh, they, they're they, supposed to be like super nice dogs. They're not like crazy. Isn't that the shit. dog from um Peter Pan? I believe so. It's a newfie, yeah. I believe uh Nana. Yeah, Nana was a fucking newfie. Of course, Great the- Dane. I love Great Danes. Uh, they're fun dogs. I guess they're the tallest dog in the world. They're not as heavy as some of these others, and you can see why they're not as like. But uh, the thing that sucks about Great Danes, they have really, really short lifespans. Yeah, like yeah, they a lot of a lot of these bigger dogs do. In fact, they just live way shorter than a medium sized dog would. Yeah, a lot of these uh, great. I think the Great Dane lifespan is like really fucking brutally short. Let me just take a it's look. like seven years, or seven something. to nine years. I think is the average for them. Yeah, um, eight to ten years. Oh, eight to ten years. Yeah, and uh, what the happens, Irish Wolfhound is the one of the shortest. A lot of times they get uh, problems with their uh, digestive system, like their guts get uh, uh, the bloat. You talking about like yeah, t- they get tangled up and stuff. Uh, I don't know what the. N- it's like uh, what's it called? Newfies are also eight to ten years. And what was the first one? Saint Bernard. Saint Bernard. I think they actually live longer. Uh, St. Bernard's are also 8 to 10 years. So a lot, oh, of, these, as well. a lot of these larger dogs do not have the greatest. The, that's a fan. badass dog right there. This the dog punch, looks man. cool as shit. That, um, someone in Steve's family had one of those dogs. They're fucking huge dogs. They're really fucking, yeah, they're definitely fearless, but they're really good family pets. Uh, really honestly. sad lifespan on these 5 to 8 years. Ooh, damn. So, I mean. 5 years the dog and it's dead. I, oh, dude, I'd be so depressed. Yeah, I mean, like, it's almost like, ugh. That's just not even... I mean, it, it already kind of sucks more than kind of, really, that dogs have such short lifespans in comparison <sighs> oh, to Oh, don't even tell me about that, dude. Because it's like, you know, obviously you fucking get really attached to your dog. And They're you awesome. And you all this stuff together and stuff, and you really have a fucking real relationship. And then it's like, okay, well, you know, around the time that if, you, if they were a kid, they'd be going to fucking... Um, you know, junior high or something. Instead, it's like they're old and they're dead. So that definitely fucking sucks. I'm old dogs. and I'm dead. So to trade it down even to like five to what, eight years. Uh, what's next? It's it's French man. Uh, what kind? Of, what are these dogs for, by the way? Guard uh, dogs. These are guard dogs. These are for guard sure. dogs. Well, they look pretty fucking badass. Uh, Antolo- Antolian shepherd. These are from Anatolian. Turkey. Anatolian. Anatolian shepherd. Thank you, Paul. Mm-hmm. They actually have another name they call them by too. Uh, what uh, is it? Oh, what is it? Um, I can't remember, but they actually have a they have, they have another name that they call these dogs. Um, so these dogs actually have a respectable thirteen to fifteen year. They lifespan. actually use these uh, dogs with. They're from Turkey with cheetahs. Really, uh, yes. they guard sheep from predators such as wolves, bears, and even cheetahs. They are strong, muscular dogs, uh, weighing around forty-one to sixty-eight kilograms. You can do the math yourself, and they could be up to ninety-two centimeters tall. So that's a pretty fucking tall dog. Yep. Um. Dogs have a fearless, protective instinct, but they're very loving and loyal towards their pack. And they actually do have a pretty respectable lifespan of 13 to 15 years. Uh, Leon Burger. I've never even heard of this. I've, I've not heard of them either. Kind of a cool dog, though. Looks pretty neat. Um, they've been bred by mixing three of the largest dogs, the Newfoundland, the Great Pyrenees, and the St. Bernard. So they're kind of like a mixed, uh, a mixture of other giant dogs. I'm sure their lifespan is probably reflective of that. Nah, eight to nine years, so yeah. <coughs> uh, English Mastiffs, these are definitely cool. Uh, Mastiffs are the largest dogs concerning mass, but not height. This is if you want the big boys. They say they can weigh up to 156 kilograms. Find <laughs> out how much that is, please. I think that's about 300 and I mean, if 117 pounds. was 255 pounds, then uh, it's probably close to 300 pounds or a little over. Respectable enough lifespan at 10 to 12 years. 343 pounds. Yeah, Jesus and up Christ. to 300. That's more than me. I mean, this dog, 
the largest examples of this dog way more than I do. So, I mean, that's fucking insane. Yeah, that's crazy. I can't even imagine trying to control a dog that weighs more than me. I mean, look <laughs> at this guy. I mean, this guy he's with here. I mean, you can clearly see he has a greater mass than the dude whose shoulders he's jumping up on. I mean, he doesn't if he was if that dog was standing up right like a person, he'd be taller, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, mass is the largest dog concerning mass, but not height. Weigh between 50 to 156 kilograms. Stand around 64 to 91 centimeters tall. They have served as watchdogs for most of their existence. Even Caesar of Rome was impressed with their appearance and performance during the Caesar conquest of, of England. Why don't say Julius Caesar, stupid fucking I don't know. Caesar of Rome. Caesar of Rome. Of Rome. Weren't there? There was more than one Caesar, too. So yeah. I, I, I think that's who they were talking about, though. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Julius. The Dude, that here. looks like a dog that I want to give a hug to right there. It looks so fucking fluffy. That's the fluffiest yeah. looking fucking dog. Dude. And it looks luscious. That's like a luscious coat, dude. Uh, I can guarantee you that coat is a pain in Fuck the ass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Eight to ten year lifespan. Uh, very familiar. Ugh. Very similar to Newfoundland's. Uh, sometimes mistaken. Considered uh, the same breed. Although they do have some differences in appearance and personality. Overall, they are sweet and gentle dogs and easy to train. Perfect lifeguards. Good at rescuing people from drowning. Another water dog. Uh, Kangal. Whoa. That's a weird looking They come from Turkey. Well known as livestock guard dogs. Uh, Not as massive as other Mastiff breeds, but they're faster and more agile. Uh, Can weigh up to 66 kilograms, whereas their height varies between 76 and uh, 81. And... uh, (laughs) <laughs> this dude next to him looks like a fucking doesn't look like a very tall man, but look he at probably this, is probably reasonable height. Just look it's at this massive dog, fucking dog. Though. It's like a bear. Yeah, I mean this dog looks intimidating as fuck. Like if you if this dog was coming at you, oh, you'd be shitting your fangs hell, bared. You'd be like, oh fuck, I am fucked yeah, now. Unless you have a gun or a fucking weapon, you're fucked, dude. And then of course the Tibetan Mastiff, who uh, Chelsea's groomed a few of these, and. Uh, they're apparently really a pain in the ass in terms of like grooming. Yeah, they look it. Um, a lot of these dogs, like, it's hard. A dog that has a big coat like this in general is tough to do. But when it gets to the point where, you know, you're fucking talking about um, a giant dog with that kind of size, I mean, holy shit. Yeah, it's going to take uh, a while. Nice long lifespan, 12 to 15 years, pretty good for a dog. Um, Tibetan Mastiffs, they're not actually Mastiffs. Uh, they are flock guardian dogs. They're fearless to confront some of the strongest predators, so they're, they're, they'll fight wolves and leopards and whatever comes their way. Uh, they are muscular, large dogs weighing between 45 to 72 kilograms and uh, standing around 84 uh, centimeters tall. Damn, dude. Fucking metric system bullshit. Some big ass fucking dogs, dude. That's enough of big dogs. What about small dogs? Oh. Time to talk about these little tiny itty bitty motherfuckers. So they don't have a whole little picture gallery like the last one. Um, Chihuahua. Maybe you can click on them. Let's see if they if clicking on them produces pictures. Yep. Hey. So there's Chihuahuas, which uh you know dogster. Yeah, I've had Chihuahuas. We've known Chihuahuas. Uh yeah. It's not surprising to see them on this list. Um, there is a they're talking about one named Rico, who weighed only seven ounces. Jesus. Fully grown. Uh, usually they weigh between four and six pounds. Uh, the Brussels Griffon. Uh, I remember this dog from uh, the movie um, As Good as It Gets. Where's the picture? There's no picture. Oh come Yay. on, dogster. This article kind of sucks for this reason. Um, the Pomeranian. I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm just going to skip this one because uh, yeah, there's no fucking pictures on there. But you can see right there the Chinese Crested, Japanese Chin, Russian Toy Terrier. I mean, there's a lot of these are just designer dogs, basically. And these dogs are uh, pretty much exclusively companion animals. There's no sort of work or anything they can no, do. No, I mean, um, that's bullshit, TJ. It is. Yeah, some of them are Mausers, dude. They're space yeah. saving uh, Paul. Yorkies, I guess, are. Yep. So Yorkies actually can uh, hunt rats and stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they're going to be doing lots of that. But I don't think they're used for that too much nowadays. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think so. So we're going to BuzzFeed. That's how low the, we're scraping the barrel, dude. We're going to BuzzFeed now. I actually like this one. It, was, it seemed like they Occasionally there is a good article yeah. on BuzzFeed. Now, this is not, I mean, this is not really an article. It's just pictures. You can with lower like your blood pressure facts. just by petting your pup. See, Paul? That's what you need to do. Sweet. Well, that's, I pet Dinor a lot. Throw my so. statins in the trash and just pet fucking Salvador. Pet pups. 
Uh, Corgi is Welsh oh, for dude, dwarf corgis. dogs. Corgis are cute as fuck. Uh, Chelsea has always wanted a corgi. Oh, dude, I totally endorse you guys getting a corgi. But I don't really want one. For a what? <laughs> oh, you're a piece of shit, TJ. Salvador Confirm. lays like this a lot. Uh, the reason dogs curl up is because of an age-old instinct to keep themselves warm and protect vital organs while they sleep. Makes sense. Although I think your vital organs are still kind of yeah, they're kind of. I guess it's the best you could do. Um, anything smelly your dog rolls in only smells gross to you. To them, well, I figured that out. Yeah, they I mean, love to roll in some stink ass shit. Oh, if you let a fart go by a dog, they'd be like, "Damn!" That's they a, love that shit. Yeah, they're like, "Cool." Dogs really don't stink. have our I, dogs really don't have our sense of discrimination when it comes to smell. You know? Oh, they'll they'll go for shit that we think is disgusting. Like, dude, I had a, a cocker spaniel named Freckles. Yeah, and I would get all you know your underwear get all swampy and shit. You got a little skid mark going on. You throw that shit on the ground, dude. Freckles would eat my fucking underwear. Oh, my not the not the fresh ones, but the stank ass ones that I'd worn all fucking day. Oh, it's like, mmm, dude. One Paul's time, buttholes. Uh, dude, there's good. a story about Freckles, dude. One time, he's whining and shit. He's wandering around. He's a uh, cocker spaniel. He's whining. I could tell something was up. And I'm like, what the fuck, Freckles? So I'm looking him over, like maybe hurt himself. And there's something underneath his tail. And I can't even really tell what it is. So I went and I got a flashlight. And I'm looking like something hanging out of his ass. And I looked. And I fucking shit you not right on it. It was like a loop of something. And I'm looking, what the fuck is that? And I see Hanes on it. (laughs) Dude, he ate the whole pair of underwear. And the elastic waistband went all the way through his digestive tract. I gra- like I was home alone, so I he was clearly it was bugging him. So I went and got a pair of my mom's like cleaning gloves. I hooked my finger in that loop and just pulled, and the whole fucking waistband oh. came out of his ass. <laughs> oh my god! None of the cloth left on it, just the fucking rubber <laughs> waist. Cloth digested. He had a scare with Grendel, dude. That's true. Grendel like had a blockage in his stomach, dude. I forget what it ended up being. Oh, it was a bunch was of fluff. fluff. It was fluff. Oh, he, he ate a bunch fluff. of fluff. He ate a whole bunch of fluff, and it blocked his cyst. Luckily, it just seemed to pass on its own. Because they were talking like, if we do surgery, it's going to be like $2,500 and all this. I'm like, oh, my it God. wasn't even a guarantee of anything. I'm lucky we haven't had one of those with Dino. But luckily, it, got, do. luckily it, se- it passed on its own, and it was fine. Yeah, yeah. Dude, our dark Hercules, we had, we had fucking... Remember, he got like epilepsy and shit, dude? Oh, yeah. And that he that would just horrible. be seizing, and like... Yeah, that's another aspect of dogs is like when they get older and you have to face that shit down. It's like you go to these vets like, OK, and it's like unless you paid for pet insurance, you're the, the whole dog's whole life. It's like now you're faced with something. It's like, OK, we can do all this stuff for your dog. It's only like ten thousand dollars. And you're like, uh, the dog's like 14. Yeah, I, I don't think I mean, like, look, I, I want them to live. But most times we're like you're at the point where you're at a vet. It's like, you know, like, is it really worth it? I mean, sometimes it is. Like, if, if there's a hope of them actually having a, a decent life, but a lot of times when a dog hits a certain age, like, there's really not. And they, kind of, I mean, it, sometimes it's not even age. Like, I had a dog, Boogie, that I had to put down when she was five because she had <laughs> so much interbreeding that she had all these problems and talking to all the fucking doctors and thousands and thousands of dollars at vets, and none of them would tell me, like, here's the way we can make her better. Just she had a weak ass liver and a weak ass kidneys and shit, and nothing we could do would keep them stable. She'd be fine for a while and then sick. Yeah, and like, like real sick, like shitting, puking, obviously in pain. And she'd be like that for a couple of weeks, and then she'd get a little better. And we just had to eventually make the choice. It's like that cycle fucking can't be good for her. It's that roller coaster ride. Well, it's like, you, you, it's like <clears throat> I think it's called like uh, like palliative medicine, where it's like all you can really do is you can just, like, help them manage the, the pain and the other things. And, like, obviously you can deal with the organ failure or, or near-organ failure when it happens, but you can't. There's no way to cure it. No. no. Towards the end of her life, they were telling us, like, we'll put her on an or- a transplant list for an or- for kidneys. or And I was just like, a transplant? <laughs> yeah. Well, there's people it's that'll like, go all me. the way with their pets. Like, they'll, they'll do it. Oh, I know. Yeah, but it's just, like, at some point, you I know, mean, I asked the lady, be- I was like, let's say we pay for this. What are the chances that this comes back? And she's like, well, there's great, a great chance it'll come back because a lot of times the kidneys, they got the problem from the gallbladder. And then a lot of times it's connected closer to the, you know, like there's just all kinds of shit that it could be. So we could go through this like $10,000 kidney replacement surgery for the dog. And then six months later, it's going through the same shit. That's crazy. Yeah, there's just no like. Well, basically, what they were telling you is like at a certain point, like, look, we can do whatever you want to do, right? But 
the chances that this is still going to be an issue, it's like maybe we'll get two or three more years with Boogie, but eventually it's going like, to we'll run out of options of what we can do for Boogie. So right. Boogie's well, it was like that, that um, when uh, uh, the, the dog had uh, puppies, when um, Hercules uh, and... Or D.O.G. Uh, had... Or, yeah, yeah. Or, or D.O.G. had... Uh, they had like, whatever, they, we had, had some Maltese's and they weren't all fixed. And, uh, and I guess none of them were fixed, actually, although they did get fixed after this. Um, there was like two little puppies born, two little Maltese puppies, and we were raising them, and um, one day, my fucking uh, little sister goes up to my dad, and she's like, the puppy won't wake up, and like, hands her the dog, and the dog is just like, fucking Obviously dead. dead. <laughs> yeah. So one of the two puppies just died, and so we took the other one to the vet, and they're like, it has like a serious heart defect, same thing the other right. one had. Well, well actually, there's a, there's a an, if you take the dog to LSU... There's a veterinary, a veterinary medicine hospital that can actually fix the dog's heart. Right, defense. and so they they had to do a uh, a micro surgery on this dog. They actually, yeah. fix the heart defect. And they actually, well, uh, they it seemed like they did, but the dog still ended up dying. Like a what well, a neurological problem. Yeah, it well. had all kinds of neurological issues. But I mean, even with all that, it. even we did all the, all that to save like. But like, we we probably I mean my dad probably spent five thousand dollars or more trying to save that dog's life, but. Yeah, yeah. It's just at some points, you know, nothing can be done. And I mean, he was just the kind of guy that uh, he just did not want to give up, even when everyone else is like, "This ain't, this is not going to happen." You know, he was like the last one. It had to be everyone else going to him, and being like, "You're just putting this dog through needless suffering at this point." Cause right. It's not. It ain't going to get better. I mean, it's just brutal. Um, dogs really, they teach you a lot of the hard lessons of life, man. They really do. Um, anyway. Uh, yeah, I feel like we could talk so much more about this, but uh, we're kind of run, coming running up against some time limits here. Um, so thank you guys for watching. Uh, let us know about your doggies in the comments section down below. You got any cool dog stories? Or you can talk uh, about a dog from your life. You or can your tweet some dog. photos of your pets or your dogs. Yeah, I, I love uh, getting tweets of people's dogs. Um, I'll tell you what, uh, if you guys send them to the at Deep Fat Fried Twitter, we'll reblog uh, some of them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we'll pick the cutest dogs and the ugliest dogs. Yeah. Tell us, you know, tweet us a Make picture of your dog. Your tell us praise. a few things about them or tell us about them in the comments below. Whatever. We want to hear about your dogs. We like dogs. We do. Um, anyway, thank you guys for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Yep. Peace. Yep. Become Peace, a patron. Bitch.